thank you for joining with me tonight for our watch night service a very different format than our usual watch night services but i'm glad you've been able to tune in and join with us during the past week i contacted some ministers and missionaries and asked them to record messages for us we're going to listen to some of those tonight first of all we're going to fly off to india and hear something from the panker then we'll fly off to western canada and pick up with the Reverend Ian Gallagher. And then we'll come back to Uganda and hear from Miss Noreen McAfee. So sit back and enjoy listening to the Lord's servants tonight. And I'll catch up with you again after our trip to Uganda. Greetings in the Saviour's name. My name is Dipankar and I am a second year student at the Whitfield College of the Bible. I count it joy to be able to share with you about the Lord's blessings on the work in India. As you know, God has given us the privilege of providing for 70 orphans in the state of Orissa through the mission board. A lot of what we have done so far for these orphans has been practical. We are very much at the beginning of this work in Orissa. But we look forward to be able to share the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ with these children and request you to pray that the Lord would touch the hearts of these orphans and that their eyes would be opened to look beyond their material needs and understand their need for a savior. I would like to also thank the Lord for having given us the blessing of partnering and fellowshipping with pastors and missionaries serving in remote parts of Central, Eastern and Northeastern India. Most of these pastors and missionaries come from various financially poor tribal groups and due to lack of resources, they cannot afford any formal theological training from anywhere. It is my desire and prayer that my training at Whitfield College does not only help my family, the church I attend, and me, but also these pastors and their congregations. My singular focus over the last five to six years has been to emphasize the authority of scriptures, to encourage the pastors to walk in the paths of God's word and to equip them to proclaim old truth that glorifies our triune God. Some of these pastors have taken this relationship to next level by inviting us to their churches to preach and teach. Some have even asked us to organize youth conferences for their church youths. We have also been blessed with new opportunities to train and equip pastors in states where we haven't worked in the past. I believe it goes on to show that God has richly blessed our feeble efforts to help his servants and intends that we extend our courts to new, re new regions. On that note, may I leave some prayer points with you tonight. Would you please pray that the Lord would send us more encouragers to help us provide and support the work in Eastern and Northeastern and Central India. Please pray that the word of God may have free course in this vast land. One of the biggest challenges that the mission fields here face is lack of personnel. Please pray that the Lord of Harvest would send more workers. Please pray that the church's interest in old ways of faith would be renewed under the sound of the biblical gospel. Please pray that the Lord would deepen our burden for perishing souls and that preaching and teaching of the whole counsel of God's word would become more and more irresistible for us. I thank you again for giving me this opportunity to share what I have on my heart and I pray that the work of your church will be richly blessed by our Lord. Amen, and thank you again. Well, hello from Canada, and I want to thank Mr. Mercer for this opportunity to bring New Year's greetings to all at your late night watch night service. I can clearly remember, remember attending some of those uh, late night services after I became a new Christian. We counted it mighty strange to be heading off to church near midnight. And uh, I'm glad that you're keeping up the tradition. I'm afraid that our Canadians here are not uh, quite that brave. Our winter has been very kind and gentle to us so far. Of course, we're a long way from spring and summer, so we might get lots of snow and ice yet. In the midst of a lockdown, we're using Zoom 
and uh, our webcast services on Sundays. We haven't had any in-person services during uh, December and we're waiting to find out what will be possible in January. We're greatly missing young Andrew Dobbin, who came and visited with us for quite a few months back a year ago. And then earlier this year, he took off to Ontario. We found him to be Mr. Unstoppable because when he got a trip in mind or a project in mind, well, there was no holding him back. And I think he might be with you at this time. So say hello to Andrew for us. We miss everyone in the congregation, of course, family, friends and all. And we miss the Mercers as well. Uh, their departure from North America to Oma was our loss and your gain. And I know that you will be blessed under his ministry at this time. So Beulah and I just want to say uh, a very blessed new year. May the Lord keep his hand upon each one and upon us all to bring us through another year of his grace and goodness. So the Lord be with you. Thank you again for this opportunity to say hello. Greetings from Uganda in the Saviour's precious name. And thank you for continuing to remember the work of God at Emmanuel during the past year. Many of our activities were affected by a seven month lockdown, but there were still opportunities to serve the Lord. Preparing and delivering home learning and Bible study materials to our learners, distributing food aid and gospel literature to over 600 households in the neighboring villages, helping the sick, comforting the bereaved, language and translation work, and so on. The church services recommenced in October and we have been blessed to have the Reverend Gordon Ferguson and others from Northern Ireland taking our Sunday services and prayer meetings by Zoom. We've also resumed our evangelism programme and we thank the Lord for one lady who professed faith last Sunday. As we move into the new year, we hope to reopen the Sunday school to the children from the outside community, having restricted it to our own borders over the past couple of months. Do remember the church ministry this year and pray that God would raise up a full-time pastor for the work at Emmanuel. School-wise, only primary seven, senior four and senior six students were allowed to return to school in October because they are preparing for exams in the new year. Our own students are due back here on Monday after a short Christmas break and we would covet your prayers for them as they sit for their primary leaving, O-level and A-level examinations. Pray that they would remember all that they have been taught, not least the word of God which has gone forth in our assemblies, Bible studies and fellowship times. We're still waiting to hear when other classes may be allowed to resume, but we suspect some sort of phased return, coronavirus permitting. Uganda has registered over 33,000 cases of COVID-19 and 248 deaths. But we are told that there is widespread community transmission and we suspect that not all of the deaths are being recorded. Vaccines are not expected here until June 2021. So we need the Lord to protect us as we continue to implement all the recommended precautions. Elections are due on Thursday the 14th of January and President Museveni is seeking to extend his 34 year rule, but there is a strong challenge from Bobby Wine. Political tensions are running high and we pray that all things will go peacefully, whatever the outcome. Thank you again for all your prayerful and practical support and do continue to pray that God would save precious souls and build up his people here in Uganda. May God grant you a peaceful and a prosperous new year. Thank you very much and may God bless you. Well, I trust you really enjoyed listening to the Lord's servants in those various parts of the world. We're going to listen to the Reverend William McCray now and he's singing a well-known gospel hymn, a hymn that I learned and heard many years ago. It's entitled, If That Isn't Love. I pray the Lord will bless it to your heart. 
Following his singing of this gospel hymn, we're going to fly back to Africa, this time to Liberia, and listen to Joanne Greer and David Ducanio. Then our last flight tonight will take us from Liberia into the south of England to the town of Lewis, where the Reverend Philip Knowles ministers there with his wife and family. And I pray the Lord will bless those messages to our hearts tonight also. Thank you for the opportunity to bring a short update on the work here and some prayer requests. Um, I will start with the, the children's work here in Liberia. Um, we, of course, it was all closed on for a few months in the spring and in August we were able to start um, the Bible club and reading club again and then just this past weekend we had our first Sunday school class, just an open Sunday school class, all the children together, all still with masks on. Um, especially when we're moving around. Um, just pray the Lord would help us to be wise, that we would be able to protect the children still. COVID is still around here, still in the country, although nowhere near what we're hearing from, from your, uh, your location. But we do want to get this up and running again uh, and try to rebuild the, the Sunday school. Uh, pray that we'd be able to have a VBS this summer. That was canceled last year, of course, or this past summer. 
And um, we, I'd ask you also to pray the Lord would save children. I believe he's worked in the hearts of a few, at least one or two this, this in the last few months. And that encourages me, but I would love to see that multiplied. So pray the Lord would um, save children. Pray that also he would raise up um, helpers in the children's work here from the, the congregation here in Painesville. Um, people who are saved and who love the Lord and who love children and have a desire to reach them and who also have the biblical knowledge and the communication skills to be able to teach the children. All of those things are needed and pray that the Lord would call people and would gift them um, in those ways. Pray also for the, uh, the, the church itself. We have been encouraged with the numbers, um, the, a lot of new people, a lot of visitors coming in from the radio station and that tells us that people are listening it also encourages us in the congregation. And some of these people just come once and then we never see them again. Uh, I would say probably quite a few are put off by the fact that we do not um, practice the Pentecostal style of worship that is practiced in so many churches here, the majority of churches. But some have come back and some have continued to, or have started to come regularly. And we're very thankful for that. We have a good group of young people, especially young men. We need more young women, but. Uh, we're glad for, especially the young men who are going on with the Lord, showing signs of, of going on with the Lord. Pray for the radio station, the bookstore, and um, pray for the nation as a whole. Uh, Liberia had elections in December, and we're thankful that they um, went peacefully. That was senatorial elections. The economy is not good here. Um, there are a lot of needs there. It was not good before COVID hit, and it certainly has not gotten any better since that time. Pray for, again for the children. Their education has been disrupted again this year, just like it was with Ebola. Um, most kids here don't have access to any online, um, uh, any access online, and so they could not continue with their schooling in any way. Um, and on the subject of a school, uh, keep praying, please, that the Lord would open the door for us to start a school here. We are getting closer, I believe. Um, we are currently putting together a report for the North American Mission Board to to look at the possibility of starting just um, one class uh, in the near future, a preschool class, kind of as a pilot project, and then seeing um, what doors the Lord opens up after that. And um, we would need a location, we need a, a couple of classrooms, or at least one if we're starting with one class, and so pray the Lord would provide this. We are um, looking at the possibility of renewing our current lease for the bookstore uh, and church and adding a classroom on that property. We would also need um, teachers, of course, we would need parents who um, have the same goals as we do. There are many, many schools in Liberia that are doing a poor job, and we don't want to be another one of those. Um, but we want to provide a Christ-centered education um, uh, with using a, a biblical worldview curriculum um, and taught by qualified Christian teachers, truly saved teachers who are qualified to, not just with a, a piece of paper to say they're qualified, but actually with the the skills that um, they need to teach effectively. And so pray that the Lord would provide all of this um, and that he would open the doors and pray for us as we um, take this to the mission board uh, in North America and pray the Lord would, would guide them also. I do appreciate your prayers and your support over another year and I pray the Lord would bless you all there in Oma uh, as you celebrate the new year, as you thank the Lord for his goodness over the past year and look forward to what he will do in 2021. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I am Dave DeCanio. For those of you that don't know me and coming to you from our mission board property on the oceanfront here in the city of Duazo and just outside of Monrovia, Liberia, West Africa. I have been here as a missionary for just about 10 years now. It'll be about three months from now. I'll be, have been here for 10 years. It's a very long time. I'm getting old, actually. I'm getting tired of the heat. It is blazing hot outside right now. As a matter of fact, the house right behind me, which is where I'm living, is thankfully a friend of mine here in Monrovia came over and helped me put in insulation. You can't buy insulation here. We haven't had any for the last 10 years, so it's so hot in the house but uh, he had some leftover that he ordered from America, gave it to me free, and we installed that into the attic. And so it's a lot better in the house with the air conditioning or air cool, as they call it here. Let me talk about the work really quick. 
like uh, you're looking here at the front of the bookstore. It's a bit run down, I know. Uh, it's also our legal NGO headquarters and the place where we have our church building. They're doing a lot of road construction in front of the property. They're going to widen the road. We've been here renting for about 15 years, and we're considering renting again for another five years because we're finding it a little bit difficult to find property at the moment for a reasonable price. The landlord's actually willing to build a new unit for us. Um, he's willing to do that because he wants to use it in the future, and he'll do that at his, his own expense. But that will lengthen the church and help us to be able to fit more people. Last Sunday we had 80, which is a pretty normal size for our church right now, and we're starting to outgrow the facility. Uh, this new construction will also hopefully allow us to possibly start a Christian school in the near future. Uh, of course, that's subject to the North American Board's approval. After COVID, we were not able to do Sunday school because we had to have two services, but we've now brought it back to one service since things have died down here a little bit. Um, we started Sunday school back up again, and we have a really good number, particularly of young people in our youth fellowship. That's been really encouraging and uh, several of them are really going on with the Lord and they have a keen interest in the Lord. One of the young men was saved from our radio station. His name is Christian. Usually I listen to music at registration like Hot FM. So when I was switching, switching, uh, I got to the registration and then I just stuck to it. And I listened to it for a few seconds and then I got interested in a preaching and in some other programs on the station that's how that's how i said but then i will visit that pre-presbyterian church that's how i came here and then here's another young man who got saved in our sunday school program and he's now in his late teens and he comes faithfully when he's a show of phrases where in christ is a savior christ is a redeemer christ is the one who takes away all our sins but i used to be like wow how can I, a uh, filthy sinner, just by believing Christ, have his sins removed? Just, just that simple, the simple trust in Christ, how can it be that just that simple thing would take away our sins? Then a fellow that's been with us for 10 years, Nathan Barco, he was a Jehovah's Witness, and he came to Christ through a lecture of Dr. Mark Allison. And that the other thing told us that we should have no one interpreting the scripture, but the scripture should interpret itself. And if we have difficult passages that we don't understand, we should go to another passage in the scripture to help us understand it, instead of looking up to the governing body to tell us uh, this is this and that this is that. So that make me surprised. We're still running the radio station 24 seven. We continue, as I said, to get an incredible response and pray that God would protect that door of utterance and keep it open. Pray as well for wisdom as we consider renting again for the next five years again subject to mission board approval and then finally if you would just pray for the church ministry the preaching ministry that the lord would give me grace as i preach we also have an assistant to me pastor moses don and he does some preaching as well and that the people that sit under the preaching would grow in the grace and the knowledge of the lord and that we might see this church come to be a constituted church. Thanks again for your prayers and your support. Hello everyone, Enoma Free Presbyterian Church. Thank you for having us tonight at your watch night service. We want to thank you for your uh, prayers and support in the work in Lewis. The Lord has done great things for us. We are the Noah's family serving the Lord in Lewis. Uh, I'm Philip obviously, this is Joshua, Josiah, Jessica and this is my wife uh, Valentina. So we just want to say to you all uh, Happy uh, New Year. Uh, thank you for everything that you've done for us. Uh, just to give a short report uh, from the work in Lewis because I know time uh, is short. Uh, I'll just give an update on our carol service. A few weeks ago uh, we had a blessing that a lady contacted us uh, through our Facebook church page. Uh, that was a great blessing that we'd opened up. And she's asked about coming to the services. Were they still open? Though some churches were closed uh, in England and near Lewis. So we said yes we're open. You'd be welcome to come. 
Well, we're so glad that that week later uh, in the carol service, the, la the lady did come and she brought three of her friends. And then she came back that night as well and brought more friends with her. Plus, we also had other visitors as well. And we were very encouraged. And we pray that God will bless and undertake and continue uh, to strengthen. Uh, just another one thing, if I may just say, the dear man, uh, for those who watched uh, when we did the, the deputation online, a man named Ivan, who was saved uh, under our ministry uh, when we came to Lewis, just two weeks ago, uh, he passed away. He was called home to be with the Lord. And I had the great privilege, asked by the family to take his funeral. And what an opportunity it was to preach the word of God. And we've always said, if the Lord had even called us to Lewis, just to see that one soul saved, it's been worth it all. But we're glad we can report that we have seen others saved by the grace of God. So continue to pray for the work of God in Lewis. Lewis is at the bottom of the south of England, uh, near Brighton. So that's to help you with location. As far as prayer requests go, we're just praying uh, for five families to come in or five individuals. You pray that uh, with us and see God move. As well, we have our Sunday afternoon children's work. That's on Facebook Live, the Wise Builders Club. Uh, it'll start again in January. So pray for it, that as the gospel goes out in Lewis and in the south of England, and even United Kingdom, but particularly where we live, uh, that contacts will be made. Uh, families and children will come to the Sunday school, come to the church, and may we see again the gospel flourish in this town of Lewis. We continue to pray over and hold to that verse that the Lord brought us to Lewis with. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And we're glad to say that Jeremiah 33 verse 3 has never failed. So from us all we just want to say thank you for your prayers for your support and happy new year well everybody happy, happy new, new year. year all the best bye, bye.